Hey everyone, Sheila here from Life of Pets. So today I thought I would do a video on breeding mystery snails. As you can see, we do have a lot of them and have been very successful with breeding them. These are, or a lot of these are parents and the offspring and we are in the process of moving tanks with them to give them a bigger tank and more space. So when you're wanting to breed mystery snails, the biggest thing is to have the water level a lot lower. Now we only do it about an inch and a half lower than the black rim because obviously there is a part of the black rim as well and this has worked for us. You may find that your snails prefer the water level a little lower but this is what we have done with ours and like I say it has worked very very well. They are laying clutches like crazy and so like I say we found this works for us. You do also need a tight fitting lid. Now I don't have one on this tank right now because I want to show you what I've got going on in here but you you will need a tight fitting lid and the reason for that is the tank needs to be about 78 degrees and that will then create humidity if you have a tight fitting lid and that is what is needed so that when they come out of the water there is the humidity and then they will lay the eggs now I don't know whether you can see sort of those marks on the back right there they are the remnants of these in here I did actually decide to take these off and I'm not sure if I can, oh, I can do this one handed. And so what I have in here, these are two clutches about ready to hatch. In fact, I don't know whether you can see, but that one there, this lighting's terrible. Let me just move it down here and see if that's any better. You can see this one here is actually just starting and so is that one. They are hatching within about eight days, but it does vary greatly. So all I've done in setting this up is this paper towel is damp, which is what it needs to be. It mustn't be soaking wet, otherwise the babies can actually drown. And then I just put this lid over the top and that way it creates the humidity that is needed. And then the reason I sort of float them in here is I just think that one, it's somewhere to put them and they can then just sort of float around the tank. And also it means that I'm sort of not likely to forget about them if I put them somewhere else. So this is sort of the way I've been doing it. Now I have done it with leaving the clutches on the side of the tank and just letting them hatch and crawl into the tank. And I've done it this way as well. And at the moment, every clutch we have had has actually hatched. So for me, I've not really noticed any difference. And so I do tend to leave them. But for the purpose of this video, I did take those off because I wanted to show you that there is another way that you can do it should you choose to not leave them on the side of your tank. Now, if you do leave them on the side, then they are likely to hatch and then just go straight into the tank. With our first clutch, I wanted to sort of just follow the process through. And so I did take them off the side and then we incubated them. And then they actually, when they were ready to hatch, I moved them sort of into here and all like the little white pieces and bigger pieces that you can see that is actually sort of the clutch itself or the egg sac yolk sac call it what you like and they will eat on that for the first few days so for about four weeks i did actually leave them in a breeder box just floating around the tank because i just wanted to see their growth and their behavior i wanted to see the colors develop and then once i was sort of satisfied with all that then i did just let them into the tank since then all our other clutches have actually just gone straight into the tank so as you can see we do have a lot of babies in here we have blue and ivory so the ivory is the little one right there and then the blue ones are what we've actually got most of we do have a lot of the blue these are now available for sale on our website and the first batch that we put on they did sell extremely quickly and so hopefully if you do want to go take a look at them by the time you get there there will be some available however we do update the website every friday with what is going to be on sale for that week now i do just want to put it out there that obviously this is a lot of snails in this tank and if breeding is something that you choose to do, you do need to make sure that you have an outlet for all the babies 
because in each clutch we have had about a hundred so there's probably at least 200 snails in this tank and I have actually removed some of the adults from this tank and I've put them in another tank that we've set up so that means that there's sort of at least 200 in here and then when you think that we have another two clutches that can produce anything from one to 200 that is going to be a lot of snails so you do need to make sure that you have an outlet for them because you need to rehome them and let me tell you boy can these little guys eat we do we do go through a lot of food every day and in doing that it also means we do have to do a lot of water changes on that tank especially with the fact that we have so many in here snails do need a high calcium diet and they do need calcium in the water and so for that we do the cuttle bone which is this white piece right here unfortunately the light is bouncing off it and i have another big piece inside the coconut hut and then there's just other little pieces sort of dotted around as well they do need it because it will absorb into the water very slowly and that will help with the strong shell growth they do also need the calcium in their food and we do that by adding calcium carbonate to a snail mix that we make up and that is how we end up with really good strong shells which gives them a very very good start in life one question I do get asked about mystery snails is do they eat plants and they do not eat plants as you can see we have some in here with them now if you have a plant that is dead or dying then they may eat the the dead leaves they will do that because mystery snails do clean up however they do need to be given a good diet themselves snails very often get a bad rap because people buy them thinking that they're just going to eat algae clean up the tank and that is very often not the case the only one that's really any good for that is the nerite snail mystery snails to me have a lot more character but they're not that brilliant at cleaning up a tank they would much rather eat the green beans or whatever food that you choose to feed them they will eat some of the biofilm on your glass but for the most part they won't eat the algae particularly so these are not a good cleanup crew i guess is what i'm trying to say one thing i did forget to say at the beginning of the video is to encourage them to breed along with the things mentioned you do also need to feed quite heavily in the aquarium which then means that you do need to do increased water changes so when breeding mystery snails i mean it is great to do i am having so much fun in doing this and sort of seeing what colors are going to come out of what parents you do also need to make sure that you have what the snails need the commitment in doing the water changes and then obviously rehoming all the babies all right guys i do hope that this video was helpful this one was actually requested a great deal because i've been showing mystery snails so much recently especially over on on Instagram and Facebook and I have shown them several times in videos just recently then a lot of you have been asking on how do you go about breeding them so I do hope that this video was helpful all right guys thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on your notification bell so that you know when we next upload all right guys thanks for watching and we'll see you next time